Good morning. Great to see you all. We've had uh, some beautiful weather. It's been wonderful to be outside and enjoying. Mona and I got out for a walk last night and the nice cool, nice cool air and everybody kind of out and about makes you feel better. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. If you're on uh, Facebook or Zoom, just remember that what follows us on Facebook, we didn't direct or endorse. Also, if you lose uh, feed, uh, just remember, all of you need to remember, if there's a service, a special music, or a message that connected, you can always go to the website, hit video services, and our, our videos are there, and also our YouTube channels on the website. So any of the services over the last few months that you want to review, uh, you, can, you can do that. And then, uh, what a slide do we have there? There's a, if you go to the website and hit communications in the header, uh, you can make sure you get the things you want from us. Also, if you're on Facebook and Zoom and you want to let us know that you attended, that you actually were part of the service, you can register that there. That's what it looks like if you go on the website. And then uh, guests, if you're, uh, if you're new with us on Facebook or Zoom and you want to get, a, get something to us, prayer concern or an update, go to... Um, the website and hit contact us and that goes directly to my inbox. Those of you here, if you're a guest, um, you can either fill out a white uh, pew card or if you, somebody on your row, if, they, if you find the red books, uh, the red books on your row, we're passing those again. Just get it wherever it is. You may be the one person in a row. Go down, get it and uh, just sign in. You can use that to give us any information that we should have. Uh, this is Father's Day, and as, because it's Father's Day, we give the women um, flowers, and we give the men uh, duct tape. So, uh, men, uh, because our fathers could fix anything. Now, I resent the church member, he knows who he is, who said, I'd like to use this duct tape on you, Pastor. Uh, can't believe that Mike Hayden would say that, but he did. Uh, also, if you, uh, if you are a lady and your, uh, your significant other or someone, uh, there's a male in your family, we, if we have enough, take, please take one for, for them. Uh, that, uh, that works. Uh, if you look on the calendar, it says there is a youth meeting tonight. There is not. Uh, the calendar and the announcements are off. Uh, the, uh, the truth is the youth are taking tonight off. We are uh, going to have a prayer meeting to pray for Ukraine. Uh, we've taken a few weeks off, but a lot's happened, and feel like we just need to gather 6.30 tonight, conference room, and we'll kind of lift up what's, what's going on and, and pray. The uh, chess group meets uh, tomorrow at noon, uh, the start with a lunch, and, and then uh, Tim Samolitis will teach us some, and we'll play, play some. The uh, Debbie Meyer Circle is back meeting uh, tomorrow night, 6.30, and Rowena Sizemore will be the speaker. Tuesday, Bible study 10, finance team, Tuesday noon, uh, Wednesday, Saturday, Jacob has exercise classes. Um, Wednesday night, there's the children's I Wonder, and the adult is doing the uh, generational impact or grandparenting matters. Had a really good turnout for that. It seems to be going over real well. Six o'clock Wednesday night. Join us for dinner at five, but let us know you're coming. And then uh, men's group, Wednesday night, 7.15. And Friday, there's a pizza, popsicle, and party for K through third grade. Uh, next week, uh, church, all church trip to Blennerhassett Island. Uh, we're going to leave right after church, and we'll provide a picnic lunch over, over there on the other side. So if you're interested, let us know. We'll kind of caravan over, and we're going to spend uh, some time over on the island. Need someone to help with the lawn through the summer? Uh, Cinda O'Brien would like someone to help with flowers. You can read her announcement. Uh, need a volunteer in the necessity closet to help with uh, sign-in and uh, need a, some folks to maybe help with uh, our greeters. Uh, that's another way you could serve. And the mayors would like someone to help with the, to go with them to the Dominican Republic. Uh, they're joining with a group from Bolivia. They have about 13 people. They need two more to fill out the mission trip. If you want to go, we have a mission trip fund, and we can, make it, we can help you to go for very low cost or nothing. Uh, we will... Uh, we've saved up a lot there, and we encourage people to go on those trips. That's coming up July 16th through the 21st. I think that's all I'm going to say about that. Uh, we are going to sing a praise song that relates to Father's Day because uh, we have a good father 
in heaven. Even if you had an earthly father that maybe wasn't uh, the best, uh, we have a good father. And the chorus is of this, of this uh, song is, God is so good. If you don't get the verses, sing the chorus with us. love who can escape your faithfulness an endless sea so full of grace and mercy so we sing God is so
Father, we look to you today. On this Father's Day, we are mindful that although our earthly family may have been a struggle, you are a good and faithful and true Father. You sent your Son for us, and you show your love for us in so many ways. You give us every good gift that we need. And we're just thankful for the gift of fellowship and the time to be here. Continue to bless our service as David plays. Say amen if you love this weather. Yes. Please rise if you would. Why we do the responsive reading. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. For the Lord is the great God, the great King above all gods. Come, let us bow down and worship. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. Please remain standing as we sing hymn number 58. This is my Father's world.
pray with me. Heavenly Father, thank you for this glorious day, this beautiful weather. It just serves to remind us that the blessings you give us can be something as simple as the weather. Today's also Father's Day. Whether we had a great father on earth, whether we had a so-so father, or whether we had an absent or bad father, we know that you, you are our father. You are the one we look to for guidance. You are the one that we pray to. You are the one that sent your son to die on the cross for our sins. And we thank you so much for that. Now, hear the prayer that you taught us to pray. Our Father, Take a minute to say hi to the people next to you. Here, baby. Good morning. Good morning. How are you all? Good. Good. Um, what day is today? Father's day. Father's day. Oh, so we're supposed to do something nice for our dads, right? Yes. So this is what I want to know. I want to know some top secret information. I want you to tell me the your favorite thing about your dad. You have a favorite thing about your dad? Thank you. What? He wrestles with you, and who went? And who wins? Sometimes you. Sometimes you. I believe it. Yes. That he loves you. That he loves you. Yeah. What about you? Um, I like him when he tickles. You. When he tickles you? Are you really, really super ticklish? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, Jonathan. When he plays baseball with me. Plays baseball with you, Emma. When he buys you everything you want. <laughs> Dad, take note of this, please. I'm going to need some things. Um, and, yes, ma'am. My dad tickles me. Your dad tickles you, I'm too? Super, super tickle. You're super, super ticklish? Yeah. Anyone else have something you want to share about your dad? You going to tell me something? He plays soccer with you. He plays soccer with you. Does he let you win, or do you beat him? Sometimes. All right, can I tell you something about my dad? I'm going to tell you really something that, like, He's one of my favorite people in the whole world. And he's the person that I call when I've done something wrong. And his favorite thing is when I say, um, is it bad that? <laughs> Probably it is bad, right? If you have to ask your dad, is it bad that? And whatever is going to continue is going to be bad news. Maybe. Yeah, it's going to be bad news. I'm going to tell you, girl, it's bad. But, and after something I've done wrong, his catchphrase has been, did you learn your lesson? <clears throat> and if I, can't, if I don't say yes and tell him what the lesson is, guess who's going to teach me what the lesson I should have learned was? God. My dad, yeah. He's going to tell me, right? But you know, the best thing about my dad, and I'm going to tell you probably about your dads too, is guess where you all are today? Where are you? At church. At church. And my dad, when I was your age, even there were some mornings that I'm sure I fought him and mom, and I was like, I'm not going. Guess what? My dad was like, yes, ma'am, you are going. Let's go. And you know what? I am forever grateful because my dad is a godly man, and he raised me to be a godly 
a godly daughter, right? Yeah. All right, let's pray. Dear God, thank you so much for our earthly fathers, but thank you so much for being our heavenly father that sometimes when we think we don't need you, you're there for us just like our dads. We love you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. If there is uh, any child that's out there that didn't come forward and wants to be in uh, Children's Church, you need to rise up and, uh, and head out. Our ministry moment is just to remind you that there's a uh, Youth Mission Week coming up on um, July 12th through the 15th. Uh, our youth are going to be going out to various uh, locations and homes like yours to do uh, projects that, that you would like done. Obviously, they're not going to put a new roof on your house, and they're not going to rewire your electric. But they uh, might be able to carry some things down from up from the basement or out of the garage uh, to put out for like a trash day or uh, some kind of cleaning uh, job that you'd like. But the entire week is a mission service week, and they need uh, they need your list. Now, we, um, we will tell you if we can help you. Um, if we get too many, they'll have to prioritize. But you will know that they're coming and when, but you all need to sign something, and then Joe Stevens will get, get back to you. But I think it's great that they're uh, wanting to serve the church and have set aside a week to do that. The Sunday after Mission Week, the youth will have the service, and they'll, uh, they'll share about what they learned over that week and, and people that they've helped and served. So that's, uh, that's a good thing. Grateful to, uh, to Joe. Uh, the... The offertory is a video that uh, just speaks to the uh, power of dads. Again, uh, Mother's Day and Father's Day are always uh, mixed for a lot of people. Some of you had real good relationships with your parents and some, some not so good. So today we kind of try to think about that and put it, in, uh, put it in perspective. But I think this video is a very good reminder of how influential uh, good fathers uh, can be. So... Uh, those of you that are on Facebook and Zoom, thank you that you continue to give to us. A lot of you send your offerings in to the church address or you go on the website and you give through that, uh, the giving platform there. Just hit give in the header. Those of you that are here, thank you for your uh, continued uh, generosity. We are grateful. So we'll watch this video. Let us give as unto the Lord. Dads, thank you for all the goodness you've brought to our lives, for guiding us with wisdom and truth, when we insisted, we knew it all. Pointing out the right path, even as we were taking a sharp right turn. Showing us to love God and love others while we were acting wholly unlovable. Chasing after us and walking us all the way home. Your compassion-filled heart and your merciful ways. Your insistence that we don't have to be like everyone else. Surely made us into the people we are today. Today, we want to honor you by thanking you for all you've done. Thank you for all the time in the practice fields. Thank you for all the long talks into the night. Thank you for not giving up on us when everyone else had. Thank you for believing in us far past what we could see in ourselves. If we're only able to visit you today in our memories, we know that what you gave to us still lives on. It's what we're able to give away now to those we love. It's a gift that is everlasting and valuable. And for those of us who sit here today without a father's love to remember, without all the things that should have been, we take the time to thank God, who's a father to the fatherless, who gathers those left behind as his own children. Happy Father's Day, and thank you for being our dad. Dad. so much for this generous congregation that gives money to go the where you want it to go. 
we ask that you take it and you spend it on the things that is your will. Again, thank you so much for everything you've done for us. And in Christ's name we pray. Amen. We have a ser- oh, if you, if you have a prayer concern and you're um, online, if you're on Facebook, we have a, a deacon that will, uh, if you type in, in the comment section, they'll, they'll see that and get it back to me. Also, again, you can go to the website, hit contact us, and that uh, whatever you type there comes to my inbox. And then all of you, if you have a prayer concern, you can r- r- write it down on that pew card and get it, get it to us. Um, have a few praises before that. Uh, this being Father's Day, got to throw a few dad jokes at you. Dads are famous for uh, telling jokes that are groaners. Uh, where, uh, where do they make average things? The satisfactory. Why do bees have sticky hair? Because of their honey combs. Honey combs. Yeah, yeah. What, uh, what do you call a fish with two knees? A two knee fish. Two knee fish. And uh, uh, what do you call a cow with no legs? <laughs> Ground beef. <laughs> uh, I got a million of them. Uh, all right. Yeah, what, uh, what do you call a. Uh, a laughing motorcycle, a Yamaha, ha, 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 all right. Anyway, some, <laughs> some pictures. That's right off of uh, dadjoke.com. You can, find, you can find them for you, dear, all the ones you want. Uh, there, we have a few pictures. This would be uh, Tuesday Fellowship this week. I want to thank uh, Carol Freifogel for uh, putting on uh, really nice gatherings. Always have a nice lunch, uh, good fellowship. And uh, there's always a, a game or a quiz of some kind and uh, devotion and prayer. So uh, Judy is so good to get up and chronicle these events with her camera. And otherwise, we wouldn't, uh, we wouldn't have all the memories that we have. So thank you for doing that. Those are some of the folks that, uh, that were there. Uh, and then what's... Oh, this is uh, Gary and... Uh, sh- uh, Sharon Veal, they've been married 55 years, this, like when? Uh, this last Friday, so this would be their, their wedding day. Uh, looking, uh, looking a little bit younger, but still, uh, God's blessed them with 55 years together. That's wonderful. Tell them you're, uh, you celebrate them. And then uh, this is a picture of the uh, wooden bookcase that Dave McHugh made. It's absolutely uh, beautiful. It's in our parlor. Maybe one of two. We're going to see. He's going to take a break here. <laughs> this one took a lot of work. Um, some of the uh, books that are in my library that uh, I've just, I am a hoarder of books, and I think a lot of them might be nice in a public section where you can take and read them, as well as other books around the church, are going to be landing in the, in the parlor, and Dave was good enough to make that beautiful bookshelf that they can, uh, they can go on. We're grateful for that. Uh, and then, oh, this... Uh, uh, Jackson Simmons is creating a dog park at the city park. Uh, this was early in the process where they're clearing out a, uh, a sidewalk. So uh, that is coming, uh, coming together. A lot of folks gathered to help him this week. Pray that uh, all goes well. But before too long, you'll be able to have a place where your dog can run while you uh, walk, as long as you've got somebody to watch it. So um, this is, uh, Ann Beck sent me a picture, and this is, uh, this is Drew, high school senior, vaulting 14 feet, 6 inches, placed second Pennsylvania AA high school pole vault, so I dare, I dare you to try it. Uh, yesterday, yeah. Yesterday, he did 15-1 and came in, came in first, and uh, Ann has told us that she can do better than him, and so we are going to put, a, <laughs> we are gonna put up a, a pole vault uh, a place and let her show us. So that's a beautiful picture. How many of you are willing to vault into the sky like that? Uh, uh, and then this is a picture of uh, Daniel, senior at William & Mary. A picture is him running as part of a Colonial Association championship, came in first in the decathlon his performance was the best in the conference since 2001. First tr- tribe athlete to win decathlon since 2015. So, Ann Beck has a nice, uh, 
Nice legacy. We had, uh, was you, your grandson Noah? Noah, they, they won the Catholic single A baseball championship. So there. So we have a lot of talented family here. And then uh, who do we have now? This would be Hudson Wellington Patterson, born to Lola and Court, and Glenn and Veronica are the uh, Patterson, are the grandparents. So that's cool. Uh, this, where are you, Deanie? I got it. Deanie said, when are you going to put my great-granddaughter up? You got it? Uh, so that's Deanie's great-granddaughter. She has a very interesting name, and it escapes me. I will have that for you next week. Uh, I had it written down, but it's different than any name I've ever heard, so I'll, uh, stay tuned. Uh, and then uh, this would be uh, uh, Olivia on a pontoon with, uh, on Lake Norman with Mona, uh, obviously going to be as a budding uh, movie star. Uh, you can see that hair kind of sticking straight up, but uh, is that it, or do we have another? Oh, this was uh, Joe and Sarah were traveling, and they took this picture outside their hotel room, uh, which I, is pretty amazing. That's a pretty good view from, uh, from wherever. So is that, I think that's it, yeah. So uh, uh, other, some other praises in there for you to, for you to see. Uh, obviously, we celebrated Lou McVeigh. Wanted to thank everyone for all the cards on her 90th birthday. Uh, really glad to have Meridor Keck with us and Mark. Uh, it's great to, great to have you here. Some, some others are, are back. You haven't been around and you're back, and we're, it's good to, good to see you. Um, Jan Ashwell's with us. Uh, just been battling bronchitis, but coming back uh, as she's able. Kathy Compton has uh, surgery scheduled for uh, the end of January, so keep that in prayer. Jim Drummel. A uh, longtime member who tunes in on Facebook from California fell and broke his neck but had surgery that kept him from being paralyzed, and so he praises God. Keep Dave Elliott, Terry Fielder, Monica Fowler, Jason George in your prayers, uh, Randy Halterman, Rebecca Lyons, Bernie Marshall, Dave, Nick, uh, Dave Nicholson, Pam Morton, uh, and Betty Jo Wiseman has moved uh, closer to her son Doug in Maryland, and we'll, we'll have the address out to you soon. Pray for the people of Ukraine and for families that are grieving the loss of loved ones. And also, uh, Kim Constantino's mom, Helen Rumberg, still in Camden-Clark doing, doing tests. Possible surgery, but we don't know. We don't know yet. So, Okay, uh, any, any that we need to add to that? Let's, uh, let's pray before we, let's sing before we pray. Father, we thank you for the privilege of gathering to, to worship. We know that we have brothers and sisters in Christ all over the world that, whose governments uh, restrict them, forbid them uh, to worship openly. And if they witness uh, in the streets of Russia or in the streets of China or in the uh, villages of North Korea or in Iraq, the people are imprisoned there for blasphemy. Uh, or for uh, being seditious against the government. Thank you, Father, for the privilege of worship, but help us to remember that uh, we are, we're blessed to do this, and it shouldn't stay here. It need, our worship needs to flow out into the streets where uh, many people are feeling lost and are struggling and need to know that they're loved. Father, uh, there's a whole generation who have not had a positive family experience and we would pray that we could be a family for people that have never truly been loved, have always questioned their worth or their value. 
because the person who was supposed to bless them didn't. So, Father, we pray that Emmanuel would be a place where people experience a family blessing and, most importantly, are directed to a heavenly Father that loves them deeply, loves them like the father of the prodigal son. And when any one of us says, hey, I've messed up, and we turn around, you were there to welcome us home. You throw a party and you let everyone know that you love us. You've always loved us, and all you ask is that we turn around and we come home. Father, being in this place is one way that we show our love for you and also show our commitment to a fellowship because we're part of this family. We can bring some encouragement or word of wisdom or admonishment or exhortation to the situation that is literally directed by your spirit. So we encourage one another to walk the walk that we've committed to until that day when we see Jesus. So continue to move in our midst. Be with all of these many concerns and people. Help us as your body, your fellowship, to follow up with the people, some of whom we know very well, and all they need to know is that we have not forgotten them and that we are praying for them, uh, and it makes all the difference. Continue to guide our church and the big decisions that we are making. Guide our government and our leaders who have important decisions to make, and be with those people in countries where there is war and civil war and strife. We especially lift up the people of Ukraine. Give them strength as they battle for their lives and for their country. We pray all this and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. story from God's word that kings and priests and prophets heard there would be a sacrifice and
It's in a series on uh, the church, and we'll continue it after this Sunday, but I thought I would uh, take some time to, um, this is Father's Day weekend, good, um, good weekend to uh, think about fathers and dads and how important they are. Uh, Mona and I usually, I can't think of really any uh, first-run shows that we watch, and we just simply, I do not connect with the, um, the new shows that show up on the networks or whatever. I, I think the only, only shows we watch are when people say, oh, we saw this and it was good. And, you know, usually it's, it was popular like five years ago, but we're just, uh, we discover it after the fact. But uh, there's one, uh, one first-run show, though, that, we, that, that is the exception to that, and uh, that would be, uh, it was on NBC called This Is Us, and they just had its uh, finale after, I don't know how many seasons, five, five, five or six seasons. Uh, really a good Consistently good, interesting, accurate, emotional. Uh, two things about the show that relate to today. One is, is that it really, uh, better than any other show that I've watched, shows the generational impact of families. The whole show is based upon flashbacks to the past and future shots. So you're watching a present, you're watching a present reality, and immediately then they show that person when they were a child interacting with a parent or a sibling, and you see how their present day interaction relates back almost directly to something that was said or done, you know, 20 years ago. Very effective. And then, and then they'll go forward 20 years, and you'll see how they turned out. And it, it's a little bit of a time warp. Uh, sometimes you're watching and thinking, wait a minute, is this present? Is it past? Is it future? But it really does it. Uh, the show really does show how, how impactful families, parents, and siblings are. Um, and then the, 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 the other thing that only hit me this week was that every dad on the show is portrayed in a positive way. The three, the three sons all turn out to be very caring, very supportive. They're flawed, but they're solid. And all three of the sons really reflect the, the really good father that, they, that, that raised them. He was a good man. He died set, trying to save one of his kids in a fire. Maybe I, that's, yeah, that's a, a say, it, well, I shouldn't have told you that. Maybe, uh, if, you're, if you haven't watched the series, okay, Mona says, you spoil things. I shouldn't have said that. Anyway, their father was a good, solid person, and you see all three of those, of those fathers. And it's so different than how men and fathers are portrayed so often in, in the media. So um, this is Father's Day, and I'd like to share a few thoughts about family, faith, and fathers. First of all, and this is not rocket science, but there's a brand new study out, most conclusive of its kind, that makes this point. Parents have a major and lasting influence on their children. Um, national study out of Notre Dame, uh, single most important influence on our children is not the church, not the media, not their cell phones, not everything they're watching on TikTok, not school, not their peers, not their friends. It is without question and not even close their parents. Kids are watching their parents while you're at home and for the rest of their lives they will model and imitate you. And grandparents, we're finding out on Wednesday night that our days of influence are not over. In fact, for some of us, our days of influence are actually uh, even greater uh, today. So put simply, if parents put God first and, see their ki and their kids see this, they internalize it and it impacts them. If parents are secular and have nothing to do with faith or God or church, yes, it impacts the kids for the rest of their life. Now, we all know that raising a kid in church and exposing them to biblical truth does not mean that they will, you know, follow in your path and believe what you believe and go to church. We all have kids that we raised in church, and they've, 
they've moved on. But they have not forgotten. They have not forgotten what you did and how you think, and it affects them. By the way, the most effective ways that religious or faith-filled parents affect their kids is not by pressuring their kids, but by just simply living out their faith in day-to-day -day life. If you were trying to push your kids into some kind of a religious commitment, or uh, and I, I say that, we did push our kids. When our children were uh, in our home, they attended church, okay, I, whether they wanted to or not. So, yes, there is some pressure. If you're in our house, you're going to do what we do. Uh, and after that, no, we, uh, we have conversations and we advise. Uh, but uh, the parents who impact the greatest are not the ones that are, that are seemingly kind of trying to pressure the kids into a certain way of thinking, but simply live what they believe in a natural way, and your kids see that, they will never forget it. Now, I say this because um, oftentimes we see our kids, and they're not listening to us, and they appear to have kind of checked out of faith, and I want you to know that what the Bible says is that you're impacting them. Whether you realize it or not, they, they see you, they watch you, and they may not outwardly be showing signs of faith or talking about it, may even be openly rebellious to it, but they, according to this study, you are their parent and you have impacted them. I also say this because there are parents who check out regarding faith instruction with the idea that I'll let my children decide what to do with God when they're old enough to decide for themselves. You just need to know that decision is a non, that non-decision is a decision, and you say, "Well, I'm kind of setting a neutral playing field." That's not a neutral playing field. You have spoken loudly about your life, and if you don't talk about God, and if faith is not a part of your life, your kids see that and they take it to heart. And so, moms and dads, what you do and how you live is impactful and we need to take that we need to take that to heart and then a brief word to parents who are blocked you have an ex-spouse that is negative toward religion or antagonistic or even atheistic and you are it breaks your heart this to me says you know what God says about that mustard seed smallest seed but yet it's planted and all the time it's growing behind the scenes. And I love that image. And Jesus says, you turn around and the veil is pulled back and there's this full-grown plant. The kingdom of God is growing in your children's life. And your ex-spouse may be blocking it. And they, you may have this feeling that they are winning, but they're not. Because you've planted that mustard seed of faith. And that is more powerful than that negative, sometimes demonic, message that they're getting from the other side. It's just easy to get so discouraged to think, I, I'm not getting through. They're not hearing. Well, I've told people many times that I, I, have, the, I have the privilege of hearing testimonies after the fact because I do so many funerals. And do you know what I hear over and over again? A child who seemingly had walked away from faith, walked away from church, and they stand up at the funeral and say, mom's dead or dad's dead, but I heard what they said, and I, and I, I, I know it in my heart. And I'm like, ah, why didn't you tell them when they were alive? But so many times after the fact, you did plant the seed. They did listen, and it, and and you know, and you're not, and you don't even live to see the fact that you had more impact on them than than you than you knew. So Father's Day is a day where we process family, and it can be. It can be a painful day because uh, some of us didn't really connect with our fathers and just like some of us didn't connect with our mothers. But the good news is if, if you had a bad pattern from your father in your home, you have the privilege to start a new generational pattern. To the best of your ability, you can break some of that negative patterns that you experienced and you can start a new pattern in your family and in, in this church. And that's, that's exciting. Our culture, I believe, also devalues uh, men and manhood. Um, in TV shows and movies, men are often portrayed as immature boys who haven't grown up. Think uh, Two and a Half Men. Uh, fathers that are beer drinking and crude buffoons. Think uh, Married with Children or Family Guy. 
uh, which I haven't seen too much of, but enough to say, okay, that's not what we want. Fatherhood matters, manhood matters. Study after study shows that good fathers make a big difference. When a father's not involved in their children's lives, suicides go way up. More children struggle in school, run away from home. Behavior disorders and mental health issues skyrocket. More kids without fathers are in rehab centers dealing with drug addiction. Children in fatherless homes are more likely to drop out of school, struggle with their grades, break the law, go to prison, and experience early sexual activity. I didn't give you the numbers, but in many cases, you're looking at 70, 80, 90 percent in these statistics. Dads, good dads make a difference. Now, I realize some of you are in situations where you have told me, and it makes sense, you don't want the dad in the picture because he truly is a toxic presence. Um, and so it, it's not just automatic that dad's in the picture and things improve. I'm talking about someone who is stable, someone who is seeking the best for their family. 25% of families, I think it's almost 30% now, uh, come from homes where the father's not involved. And by the way, when dad is not involved, there is five times the chance that that family's gonna live in poverty. Uh, moms, uh, two-parent homes just do a lot better in terms of making, making ends meet. And by saying that, I'm in no way trying to devalue what single moms do. You, you single moms do an amazing job. You're covering everything, but that's not ultimately God's ideal. Good fathers make a, uh, make a difference. But what I, I do want to say this, there is a biblical ideal for families. Uh, fathers and mothers can work together, and God's ideal is that, is that dads and moms complement one another in their, in their gifts and abilities. And I know this is stereotypes, but women tend to be good on the nurturing, the compassion, uh, the uh, sensitivity, the uh, talking about uh, feelings and emotions, and dads tend to be better at setting boundaries, helping to make decisions, and setting direction. Now, I know there are exceptions to that, but in my tiny world, that was true. If the kids came in from outside and they had cut themselves or broken a bone and they, I was at the door, they would run past me to Mona because they know that I would say, I told you not to do that five times. Why? Don't come to me with your broken bone. <laughs> they go to Mona, who's going to say, oh, you poor dear, it's broken. Let's get it fixed. And, and then uh, later on, I'll say, well, when you get on top of the roof of the shed and try to be Superman, yeah, that's going to happen. So what, are you, what were you thinking? Uh, but Mona and I balanced each other. Uh, she brought a compassionate conversation, and uh, I think I was helpful in providing some perspective, setting some boundaries, helping to share values, and helping in uh, decision making. So when a father is spiritual and seeking God, it impacts you, your children's faith. Don't ever get discouraged and think, man, it's just not working. I just don't see it. God's taking your witness, and I tell you, I look back now and my dad thought I wasn't watching him. I was watching him every minute of the day. And if you're looking at me, you're looking, you're looking a lot at my dad. I, I internalized a lot. I, I talk the way he talks. Uh, uh, and I have a lot of the priorities and things. Uh, I picked it up from my dad. Louis Giglio, a great sermon on YouTube. Just Google Louis, Louis Giglio, perfect father. Uh, about an hour long, well worth your time. From the video, I pulled out this. Uh, what kind of father did you have? Uh, he identifies six earthly fathers. And uh, just sort of as I, as I tick these off, which, which one kind of relates? And my guess is probably maybe more than one. But there's the absent father, and that's the father that uh, you never knew or uh, was literally never around. So for all intents and purposes, your father was absent. Okay, just not there. There's the abusive dad, and uh, many people live their whole lives uh, with this under the surface, uh, and the person who is supposed to love you, bless you, protect you, hurt you, hurt you physically, verbally abused you, physically abused you, sexually abused you, and you have lived your life with, with that, and it's horribly painful. Uh, 
there's no, no way to gloss over it. My prayer is that within a faith community, maybe you found some support and some healing in that journey. There's the achievement dad. The achievement dad is about performance. If you get a good grade, if you do well in the sport, if you achieve, you got his attention because somehow your achievement reflects back on me. If you do well in that, then I'm your dad. But if you don't achieve, then I, you know, not, not so interested. So you learn that you better, well, you better work hard and you better achieve because I want dad's attention and I get it when I achieve. Then there's the apathetic dad or the passive dad. And um, I, I have to claim that to a point. I, I, I was there, but uh, I wasn't involved as I'd like to. I, I was kind of off working and, and serving the churches that God blessed me to serve. But uh, I know a part of, part of my kids would remember that I was kind of in the background, uh, was not as, as involved with discipline. Uh, Mona was kind of hands-on, and she was, she was there. And a lot of times I'm off to the side, and Mona would be like, get in the game here. It's like, uh, come on. Uh, Engage. <laughs> I wanted you to do that. Did you have an apathetic dad? He was there, but kind of passive, kind of almost there, but in another room. Um, and then there's the antagonist, antagonistic father who just finds your weakness and puts you down and ridicules you. And it's, it can be faith based where they're like, oh, you, you going to church? Yeah, you drunk uh, you drunk the Kool Aid with the other cult members. As someone told me recently, that's what their dad says. Oh, you going to you going to church? You drinking the, the drinking the Kool Aid that you know that all those cult people drink before they? Uh, is that what you, that what you're doing? You're still doing that from a dad to a child. What does that what does that communicate? An antagonism. You know, there's some obviously they they have some issues, and then uh, now uh, that's a tough list there. But my guess is you could you could find you can find your dad in some of in in some of those, and it's deeply hurtful when you don't connect. But the last one is the adoring father, and that is the father who is connected, loves you so much. You know he loves you. When you fail, they're not like they're like not like raking you over the coals constantly, reminding you. They're like, yeah, we're going to learn lessons from this, but this doesn't define you. Get up on your feet. Let's. We're going to go forward. You know, I love you. I'm glad you tried, but now we're going to learn from this and we're going to move on. And I'm there for you, and I care about you. This kind of father blesses their kids, and that wonderful book by Trent and Smalley, the blessing. Uh, I don't remember much of the book, but I remember the outline. When you bless your kids, it involves meaningful touch. You arm around them, holding their hand. Uh, when, my, when Kurt was little, it was wrestle, wrestling. I never thought about it, but I could. I wasn't like a hugger, but my son, uh, he'd get done, we'd get done with dinner. He'd eat his dinner real quick, and he'd stand up on his chair and say, Dad, let's wrestle. And I'm like, I haven't eaten my pizza yet. Let's wrestle. And boy, before you know it, we were on the ground, you know, back and forth and back and forth, meaningful touch. Meaningful touch, spoken words of acceptance, attitude of honor, respect in the home. And I love this one. Blessing means you picture a special future for them. And the last one is a commitment to see that future come about. Were you blessed did you, from your father or your mother, your family? Did you have meaningful touch? Were there spoken words of affirmation? Was there an attitude of respect and honor in your home? Did your parent picture a special future for you? I know you're going to do well. You're talented. You're going you're to make it. Not only are you going to make it, but every step of the way, I'm with you. I'm behind you. I got your back. If you've been blessed, there's a sense of security in your life that you've been blessed. If you haven't been blessed, people go in one of two directions. They withdraw because they don't feel they're worthy, or they become a workaholic. They're going to prove to their parents that they're good enough. Now, the good news is, is that uh, our, all of our fathers were sinners. <laughs> that's not good news. That's reality. Uh, and they failed us. Um, but we have a heavenly father that adores us. And that, my friends, is good, no is good news. When Jesus wanted us to know who God is, he didn't emphasize creator or a sustainer, or provider, or omnipotent. 189 times in the four Gospels, what does Jesus say God is? He is our Father. 
He even said, if you want to pray, you begin our Father. And this Father of ours is personal. He is Abba. He is powerful. He reigns in heaven. He has a plan. His kingdom is coming. He provides daily bread. He protects us when he delivers us from evil. And he's worthy of all praise. He is a father to the father, fatherless. He cares for the hurting and the poor and the needy. So if you are struggling in your relationship with your father. Your father may have failed you there, but you have a heavenly father that adores you and wants to bless you. When Jesus came up out of the water when he was baptized and the spirit descended, you remember the skies opened, and the father from heaven said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Have you, has God blessed you like that? Have you felt the Father bless you as his child? That is so powerful. And if it hasn't happened to you, I pray that you might open up your heart. Uh, J.I. Packer says that if you don't understand the fatherhood of God, you do not understand Christianity. It is the unique revelation that Jesus brought to us that our God is a loving, adoring Father who longs to welcome his children home like the father of the prodigal son, give them good gifts and bless them. And again, people, I think there's a whole generation of people that didn't have any kind of a family like some of us had. My parents struggled, but they stayed together. It was a, it was a, lot, of, a lot of conflict in the home, but they were, I had a stable center. And so many families today, um, it's just not like that. And I pray that Emmanuel can be the kind of family that other people that haven't had a family can come in and feel loved and maybe even maybe even be, be, be blessed while they're here. So men, I, I've taken a long time in the first half. Let me just share. Men, uh, let me challenge you uh, that you have an impact on your kids and I think you can leave a, a, a legacy. So godly, a godly father leaves a lasting legacy and this is Deuteronomy 6, 1 to 3. These are the commands, decrees, and laws the Lord your God directed me to teach you to observe in the land you're crossing to the Jordan to possess, so that you and your children and the children after them will fear the Lord as long as you live by keeping all these decrees and the commands that I give you so that you may enjoy long life. Moses is repeating for the people here in Deuteronomy what they've already heard in Exodus, like a parent who says, I've, I've told you once, I've told you a thousand times. Moses is saying, I'm going to repeat it so you can remember this. If you want to have a legacy, a godly legacy, you need to know God's commands. God's commands are the, his guidelines. The, the scripture is his owner's manual. And if you want to know how life works, if you want to know how you work, open up the Bible because the God who made you put his owner's manual out and it'll tell you how it works. And so a dad that not only hears God's commands but observes them and obeys them has an incredible impact on his children. This is the kind of legacy that brings a blessing of long life and prosperity in a promised land and many of you are setting that kind of legacy for your family. Uh, I wanted to show you just visually the, uh, um, my uh, faith legacy. I think I have a picture. Do I have a picture there? Yeah. This is uh, George uh, Rushkov, my great-grandfather. He was an uh, owner of a grocery store and a staunch Methodist, a uh, 19... 10 article of the Belleville, Illinois Times had a feature story on George Roshkob and it said, uh, Methodist deacon never watched a movie in his life. That was the, that was the headline. Never watched a movie in his life. He, he, didn't, he didn't play cards. He didn't dance. He didn't do anything on Sunday. And he, he uh, was a strict man of faith. Well, guess what? His faith got passed down to my grandmother. There's uh, Ermi. And there's Doc, my grandfather, and Ermie was a big influence on me, her faith coming from her father. And Doc uh, was a pediatrician and also a, a strong Gideon. And he went out telling people about the Gideon ministry, and I went with him. And he talked about how important the Bibles were and how they changed people's lives. So Ermie and Doc passed their faith along to my father, who is 94 today. But there's, uh, there's Doc with, uh, with my dad, and uh, my dad is a man... Uh, was and is a man of faith. And so I stand before you with, um, with a legacy of faith. 
okay? Uh, it was more strict back years ago, but uh, there's a legacy of faith that, that I stand here and, and I'm a part of. Did, did I put in a picture about the, the garage? I don't know. Yeah, you can't see that. But it's a, a dad with a walker with his son, and there's this garage that's filled with stuff, and it says, uh, one day, son, all this will be yours. <laughs> now, there's, there's a legacy for you. You know, I've stored up all this stuff, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you what I got. People, when it's all said and done, you know, the, you can give your kids money and property, stocks and bonds, but the legacy that's most important and the one that lasts forever is your faith legacy. That's the one that lasts. In fact, I've seen families and kids broken apart when they in inherited a good amount of money and suddenly their lives just kind of take off and they lose all perspective because they didn't have a faith center to guide them in how to spend and how to, how to, how to deal with money. So your homework, read Exodus 20 and Matthew 5 to 7, the commands of God and how Jesus interprets them in the New Testament. And then a godly father loves God. A godly father loves God. Uh, Deuteronomy 6, 4 says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. And so, uh, dads, you can know the commands, but not, um, but not express them in a loving way. And so I, I just see a lot of dads, some Christians' dads, is like, well, I'm going to get my kids to do this, this, and this. And the kids are watching it, and there's not really a sense of, of flexibility and love in the mix. And so the kids are just like rebelling right and left. You, you've got to have the solid commands for the faith legacy, but you've also got to have the love that allows it to be expressed in a, in a, in a way that your kids can receive it. Uh, you know, truth without love is just kind of a rigid faith. And so people, uh, dads, you need to love the Lord with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength. It's interesting, Paul says in Ephesians 6, fathers do not exasperate your children, instead bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. Why would fathers tend to exasperate their children? Because they know God's commands, and they want their kids to do this now, and kids are kids, and they're just, they're not with you. And so a loving Faithful father, you, you lay it out there, you show them what's right, and you live it even when, they, even when they go their own way. And you know you're planting that seed of faith, and they see your love, and they feel your grace, and that's so important. And then uh, thirdly, a godly father um, leaves a legacy of faith, a godly father loves God, and then thirdly, a godly father lives intentionally. Intentionally. These commands I give you are to be on your hearts, impress them on your children, talk about them when you sit at home, when you walk along the road, when you lie down, when you get up, tie them as symbols on your hands, bind them on your foreheads, write them on the door frames of your houses. The idea here is dads, we need to slow down and look for the windows to open up as we are going out, as we're coming in as we're walking along the road, as we're putting them down for bed, as we're getting them up in the morning, you're looking for that window that will open in your kids' lives where just kind of out of the blue they ask that question. You know, uh, I remember one of our kids said, so why did Jesus die on the cross? I said, where, where did that come from? It was out of the blue. And suddenly there's this like this window that opens, and as a parent and as a grandparent, we're learning on Wednesday night, you need to pray for and look for and be intentional for those windows because for a brief moment, the, the window opens up and you can speak your faith into it. But windows open quickly and they close just as fast. I remember it over and over again, Mona and I, we'd be traveling along in a van, you know, traveling back to Missouri, long stretches, and the kid would ask, our kids would ask some really meaningful question, and it's like, oh, hey, we got the moment. I was like, do you, do you want it? Uh, you take it, Mona, you got it. And she speaks God's wisdom into it, and then there's something out the window, and they're like, oh, look at the cow. And Mona would, Mona would look to me and say, window closed. I've heard that window closed. It was open, but only, only for a brief time, and so we need to be ready. There's a great uh, story about the, 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 the boy came home and said, Dad, uh, where, where, did I, where did I come from? And the dad thinks, ah, window open. Uh, okay, uh, this is the talk. Birds and the bees. Okay, uh, how much, uh, we'll get, get a little of anatomy in, and then we'll talk about, uh, yeah, I'll talk about, <laughs> I knew this was coming. I knew this was coming, and he just sweats it out. He's trying to help the kid understand about 
uh, you know, human sexuality and reproduction and everything. And he kind of even had a little, even drew a little map and everything for him. And uh, the kid's kind of like, okay, all right, that's great, Dad. And finally, at the end of it, the boy says, oh, that's great, Dad. But Johnny said they're from Pittsburgh. <laughs> so <laughs> you, you never, you never, you never really, never really know. Uh, I'm going to give you my children's moment. I didn't do it in the first service, but uh, you, guys, you guys get the. So here's my, my visual image, guys, is uh, dads, if you're going to leave a godly legacy, God's commands are like this. They are solid, secure. This is what my house is built with these bricks, okay? You can build a life on these. They are solid. You lay them down, and you can build on them. Now, for these to... For these to stay together, if you're, you're a builder, you know, they can't just kind of lay there. There has to be uh, mortar, cement that goes between them, and that's, that's God's love. God's love kind of connects the commandments in a way that, that you can understand them, and it brings it all together. So you can, you can have the, these solid bricks alone, but they're, they, they don't connect. And so the mortar is that love that flows in and among the bricks that you've laid so well you can build a house on. And then my thought was... If you're going to be intentional, you need to build in such a way that you leave a door or a window. So a lot of religious people, when they build, they build like this solid, it's like I'm going to block my kids in, they're going to believe this way, and if they, you know, I'm going to make my kids believe this way. Most of those kids are long gone. They're like, they, they force me to think a certain way. If you're going to build right, dads, you're going to build, you're going to build in such a way your kids know they can take off. They can, they can leave. They may leave and run far away, but that door is open. That window is open, and when they come back, you're ready for them. That's powerful. You block them in, and they're like, now nah, I want nothing to do with what you got. But if you say, this is what I believe, and you can leave and walk away from it, and I still love you no matter what, that's powerful. A lot of people today are building like this with foam <laughs> and pillows. It's like, you know, my kids are just going to, uh, they're going to figure it out for themselves. And they got nothing solid, nothing to build on. But dads, if you'll build on a solid foundation of faith, allow the mortar of love to connect it and leave, leave a door, leave a door open. Uh, it'll go well. Let me just close with uh, a song that I always hear and... Uh, it's tough, to, tough for me to even to, uh, to recite it. 1974 speaks of the legacy that we leave, Cats in the Cradle by Harry Chapin. My child arrived just the other day. He came to the world in the usual way, but there were planes to catch and the bills to pay. He learned to walk while I was away. And he was talking before I knew it, and as he grew, he said, I'm going to be like you, Dad. You know I'm going to be like you. My son turned 10 just the other day. He said, thanks for the ball, Dad. Come on, let's play. Can you teach me to throw? I said, not today. I got, a, I got a lot to do. He said, that's okay. And he walked away, but his smile never dimmed. And he said, I'm going to be like him. Yeah, you know, I'm going to be like him. The cat's in the cradle and the silver spoon. Little boy blue and the man in the moon. When you coming home, Dad? I don't know when, but we'll get together then. You know we'll have a good time then. Well, they came from college just the other day. So much like a man, I just had to say, son, I'm proud of you. Can you sit for a while? He shook his head and he said with a smile, what I'd really like, Dad, is to borrow the car keys. See you later. Can I have them, please? I've long since retired. My son's moved away. I called him up just the other day. I said, I'd like to see you if you don't mind. He said, I'd love to, Dad, if I could just find the time. You see, my new job's a hassle and the kids have the flu, but it's been sure nice talking to you, Dad. It's been sure nice talking to you. And as I hung up the phone, it occurred to me, he'd grown up just like me. My boy was just like me. And the cat's in the cradle and the silver spoon, little boy blue and the man in the moon. When you're coming home, son, I don't know when, but we'll get together then. You know we'll have a good time then. The reality is, is every father, every mother leaves a legacy. This dad left a legacy of busyness. He wasn't intentional about the moments. He wasn't intentional about the time, and now he looks back at a son that is just as busy and distracted as he was. And so people, I feel like when I read that song, I wish I, the reason it hits me is that's me. I've worked hard. I have given everything I have to the churches I've served, 
to the detriment of my family. But it's not over. <laughs> it's not over. Uh, I, can, I can learn and I can grow. And I want to be intentional to leave a legacy of faith. I want God's love to be central in my life. And I want to be intentional about those moments that I might see on in the days to come. So final thought, and that's this, folks. Every church can be a family for people who never had a family. Let's pray. Father, thank you that you are that adoring, empowering Father, maybe very unlike what we experience in our earthly Father, and you are the one that blesses us, and we're so thankful today. Help us to call out to you. We don't have a spirit of fear, but by the Spirit we are able to say, Abba, Father. Father, speak to us this day, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to close with hymn number 382, Be Thou My Vision. If you've never connected with your Creator and you need the blessing of the Father today, please come forward, and uh, Barb Kirsch will be forward today and over on this side. If you don't come forward but still want to talk, uh, Barb, uh, one of our deacons, will be glad to talk with you. Let's stand two verses of the final hymn. Receive now the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen.